this is for our switch fire 2D solar. This is the big, the big things on setting up your 2D solar. The fine fish use this 200 slash 83 kilohertz. For, for high speed running, use 200 only. That that keeps your uh, keeps the clutter out of the screen. Switch fire clear mode. Clear mode automatically adjusts power depending on depth. So when you get in real shallow water, if you're shooting 8,000 watts of power, you're going to get multiple returns. Clear mode will automatically adjust that power down to the real shallow water application. Max mode is better for depths over 10 foot. Uh, you adjust your sensitivity to clear the clutter or get the amount of data that you want. And then your scroll speed to match the boat speed to get uh, the best real world representation of it. It's just like these square tiles on the floor. If we speed it up, it's, they're going to make them into rectangles versus looking like the, square, the perfect square they are. This is showing a dual beam plus advantage. This is a, this is a split screen view that you can actually go in to your unit and turn on. On the right hand side, we've got our 200 kilohertz, which is our 20 degree cone. On the right side is our 83 kilohertz, which is our 60 degree cone. We're seeing a lot more detail of that tree here. This actually is more of a blob effect. In that, in the in the comp, in the main sonar screen, that will actually marry these two together, giving you this detail. But the big thing to look at is you got a fish here and a fish here. You got to got one right there. But look at look at how much more that fish here. This one didn't even show up. Those three didn't show up. Over here. This is. 20 degree cone, so 34 foot of water. We're looking, we're looking at about 10, 10, 11 foot of water here. Over here, we're looking at 34 foot of water. Now, this is going to be that 10 foot of water is five foot to each side, five foot front to rear, to give that 10 foot circle from a center from your transducer. So I can tell you, those fish right there were from six to 15 foot in the direction that they were related from the transducer. So I would need to move, if I wanted to catch those three fish, I would need to move the boat at least six foot forward, left, right, back or so with 2D sonar. But the, the nice thing here is it's adding additional fish finding data that you would miss with just a 20 degree cone. This is just showing 200 kilohertz over 70 mile an hour, we're still holding the bottom. I'm going to tell you that this is more of a limitation of this clutter here of the boat and the, and the transducer mounting than the unit because there, I haven't seen a bass boat that will outrun that the speed of sound yet. And it does, somebody's so probably going to be smashing. Your transducer is down in the water on that one, I assume. This is, this is a through, shoot through the whole okay. transducer. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get it for maximum. but. If I had this in 83, this whole thing would probably be red and blues. But on the previous screen, or is it using the shoot through the hull transducer if you have a Y cable? A Y cable always uses the shoot through the hull transducer. It disables the elements in the sighting of the transducer. Every one of my 2D images will be seen if they're from my console unit will always be through the shoot through the hull transducer. This is actually shoot through the hull transducer. Switch fire max mode. Max mode is unfiltered data, the uh, sonar system. Basically, algae, plankton, air bubbles, anything that's suspended in the water can be displayed that can make a, re make a sonar return. Sonar hits something, bounces back. Just like taking a flashlight, shooting in a mirror, it's going to bounce back into it. That's the same way sonar is. It hits something and returns. Max mode is unfiltered data exactly its way it's represented in the water column. One of the things is this is uh, auto mode sensitivity is all is going to be set at 10 is the value. It's the dead of charge speeds at 4 to match my boat speed. If you notice, you can see the, the arches here. And you can see the red. And this is our original color column. Red is our strongest return. Blue is our weakest return. It does not matter which color palette you're using. 
the big thing is is to understand what is your strongest return, what are your weakest returns. This is our vertical bar flasher. Basically, this is exactly the same thing as the old circle flashers that we've had. Actually, this process is data faster than a circle flasher because today's processors in our units are faster than a processor that was in a flasher. If you wanted real-time data, it's going to be this first column right here is the same thing as what's being displayed here. Basically, everything from that point this way is old. So if you're using it for vertical fishing, you want to focus your eyes right in on this first right edge of that here, or this vertical flasher is going to give you the instant data right now. Everything back here is history, is, it's gone. Uh, one of the things to watch is changing this chart speed will change the way these returns look too. This has, a, in my opinion, has way too much clutter. You see a lot of blues here, it's hiding a lot of the details. We go to still staying in max mode, we reduce our sensitivity to five, chart speed stayed the same, but the thing what I did here, we, did, we don't have as much strong returns, but the one that jumps out at me, if I'm looking for the biggest fish in the ocean, that one red dot right there is the biggest fish that was in that group. I've basically taken that sensitivity, tuned it down to find the biggest fish. We've got some bait fish up here, but that's, a, that's one strong fish. The other thing about that is your strongest return is going to be from the center of your sonar return. The center is stronger than the outside edges. So that fish right there in that position was dead underneath the boat. If I was working, if I got over the top of that vertical fishing at that spot, I dropped my bait down, I'd probably hit it in the head or the tail. And it makes it a lot easier to make them bite when you when you're sticking your if somebody was in your face like this, you're going to yeah. probably bite her. Can you estimate, act. like in this case where it's scrolled all the way by, kind of how far behind the boat it is, or is that...? The, the, to figure out the, the distance here, activate your four-way cursor, move your cursor over here. Ah, okay. It's going to tell you right up the top how far it is. You can actually set a waypoint right on that fish. It'll save the depth information. In 2D sonar, it'll save the depth so information. You how far back it Or if you want to go back and make a long pass. Yeah, you can, you can set a waypoint right on that exact fish. You can set it on this little underwater point. You're on Bass Boat Central, I know. This, this is that, if you go to the image interpretation form, this is that there's about 20 different pictures of clear mode and yeah, max that. mode. So that's, the same, that's the images that this is. <coughs> These are all done from sonar recordings. One thing with Hummingbird, you can put an SD card in your unit. The only limitation on the amount of time that you can record is the size of your card. You can record, you can record a full day if you had a, you can put up to a 32 gigabyte. So you've got a tremendous power of taking sonar recordings, bringing them back home, playing with these settings, and learning, because it's all it does is capture the raw data. Your unit actually processes that data from the card, so you're actually, just like you're out on the water using it. Uh, this is showing that chart speed cranked up to 10. Now look at how more of those returns stretched out here versus those crisp art. Is this bad? No. But if you're looking for fish as exactly the way they are looking underneath the water, they're not going to be represented this way. You've stretched the data. But it may make you easier to recognize those fish because you've got four areas of red. The sensitivity was cranked up back to that 15 to show more. I wanted to see more fish and more clutter, but, but it's, I want to show you, use the sensitivity control to get the data that you need to be successful. This is our clear mode, basically looking at the most intense part of that beam. There's one other thing, every time a clear mode, that thing pings down. We send a time with it. If you all remember, we had TVG on, TVG off. It's basically the same thing we're talking about, switch fire clear mode. It was time variable game. Basically, when the time that transfers, that signal left until it came back, it recorded how long it was gone. The farther sound travels, 
the more it diminishes in the water. So your returns actually become weaker. With time variable gain, a five pound fish at 10 foot of water would be a stronger return than a five pound fish at 100 foot of water. Knowing that hummingbird, knowing that diminishing value of diminishing return is able in clear mode to put a five pound fish at 10 foot of water represented on the screen the same size of 50 foot and 100 foot and 1,000 foot. So you can actually size fish with clear mode. It's a very high precision sonar system that takes away a lot of the clutter. Basically, we want to see fish and structure. This is cranking the sensitivity up still in clear mode. We're getting a lot more equal, equal fish returns like we did in maximum. Scroll speed is still set at four. 